In the previous video we looked at a new kind of shape called a rhombus and we said that a rhombus is a parallelogram that gets shifted so that the two sides next to each other, so these two sides, become equal in length. And then we discovered a whole lot of awesome new things about a rhombus. So if you haven't watched the video on the rhombus, then this video is not going to make too much sense and so I would advise you to watch that one first. So the first question says we need to work out the value of, or well, the angle, D1. So D1 is over here. Now if we had to look in this triangle here, well if you looked at the previous video you would know that the diagonals of a rhombus always cut at 90 degrees. So what we can do, and let me just give a few, oh no we can call this, we can say angle AED, so AED means this angle here, is equal to 90 degrees. Then the reason for that, I'm just going to write the reason beneath, we can say that the diags of a rhombus bisect at 90 degrees. Then if we look in that triangle, well we know that all the angles have to add up to 180, so we can say that angle D1 is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 30. And I'm just going to write the reason beneath that, but the reason is the sum of angles in a triangle. And so if you had to go do the maths over there, you would see that D1 is equal to 60 degrees. Next is C1. Well, we know that the opposite, because this is a parallelogram, well, we know it's a rhombus, but a parallelogram that gets tilted in a specific way becomes a rhombus. And in one of our previous videos, we said that a parallelogram can be also tilted to become a rectangle. So the point is, is that a rectangle and a rhombus can also be called, or they are also a parallelogram, okay? They often don't mention this in class, but a parallelogram, or oh, sorry, a rhombus and a rectangle can also be referred to as a parallelogram. So we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram or a rhombus are equal to each other, okay? So those angles should be equal. But in the previous video, we saw that a rhombus has four equal triangles. So that means this triangle is the same as this one, which is the same as this one, which is the same as this one, which allowed for the fact that these two angles over here are going to be equal. So this one's going to be 30 degrees and we know that the opposite angles are going to be the same. So what we can do is simply say that C1 is going to be equal to 30 degrees and the reason for that is opposite angles, op angles, of a rhombus. Now we can move on to D2. Well we've just said that the corner angles of a rhombus, well they get cut they get bisected and so for a rhombus D2 is also going to be 60 degrees because the diagonals of a rhombus they bisect these corner angles exactly in half. So what we can actually just go fill in is that this is 30, this is 30, this will be 60 and this will be 60. That's how it works in a rhombus. Now they want us to find the length of DE and so remember that the the diagonals of a rhombus, well they always bisect at 90 degrees and so this triangle over here has a 90 degree in it and so we can simply use Pythagoras because we know that AD is 5 and we know that AE is 4 and so we can simply say that 5 squared is equal to 4 squared plus DE squared and the reason for that is Pythagoras, we'll just say Pyth. Then you can solve for DE by taking the 4 squared over, and so we're going to end up with 25 minus 16 equals to DE squared. 25 minus 16 is 9, and then to get DE by itself, you would have to take the square root of 9, which is 3. And so the length of DE is 3. So notice that that value doesn't really make any sense at all, because we can clearly see that DE is going to be longer than AE because D to B is the longest diagonal but remember these numbers I've just made up and so they might not make sense like for example DE should have actually been more than this 4 over here but they'll often they'll do that in a test just to throw you off a bit and remember they'll often tell you that the diagrams are not drawn to scale.